Hey guys. Yeah, boy. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am the Caramel Critic and I have a special guest with me. This is my brother, KJ. Say hi, KJ. Deuces. Um, today we are reviewing Coming to America. Coming to America. So Coming to America stars Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones, John Amos, Sherry Headley, Wesley Snipes, Jermaine Fowler, Tracy Morgan, Leslie Jones, Kiki Lane, Tiana Taylor, and a whole host of stars. It's directed by Craig Brewer. So the movie starts out in Zamunda and we see that Lisa's father is living there as well and he has his own McDowell's restaurant there and we see Louis, An Louis Anderson also is working there still. On fries. On fries. We see that King Joffrey Jofer is on his deathbed. He is ending, coming to the end of his life and he tells Akeem that he has a son in America that he didn't know about. Akeem decides to go to America to find his son. Meanwhile, Wesley Snipes' character, he is in charge of this other nation and he, he wants to take over Zumunda, but he also is willing to allow his son to marry one of Akeem's daughters. Meanwhile, Akeem's oldest daughter, she wants to be queen and apparently there is a law in Zamunda that the women cannot be in charge of Zamunda. So I'll get into some of the things I liked about the movie. Some of the things I liked was the CGI when they flashback uh, to them in the first movie at the club. I thought the de-aging process was pretty cool. Uh, another thing I liked is we get to see a lot more Zamunda. We get to see some of the city. We see more of the people, more of the landscape, and it's pretty beautiful. What did you like about the movie? Like I said, there were some... Uh like just a little weird like, <laughs> like a, a foreman trying to get a wire cut there were some good parts in the movie like i like the fact that like i said they did bring back a lot of the old characters almost all of them i like the like i said you got to see more of zamunda a little bit also i feel like the makeup was done really well there's a character played by arsenio hall called baba and they do a close-up on his face and you see the makeup and it looks really it lo it's done really well also i do like when the that the moms actually end up getting along i thought there was going to be like this crazy you know like friction pettiness in between them but they they got along pretty well i said there were some funny parts in it uh to me the funniest parts were the barbershop scene Scenes. I still don't understand how they're alive after yeah. 30 years. They were already like in their probably in their 70s in the 80s, but <laughs> they're, they're still yeah. alive. Some stuff they, they, they <laughs> had to explain because 30 years later, and uh, <laughs> and fancy is still throwing flowers. <laughs> you got no promotion in 30 years. <laughs> Even Oth, not Otho, what was his name? Uh, Otho's oh, from. Man. Otho's from Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Oh, huh. yeah, I thought he would have. Yeah had like a higher position as well um but outside of that I think it was a feel-good movie more family oriented than the first one if that makes sense but outside of that those are probably the, the only things i like it wasn't too much i liked about it yeah like you said it's definitely way more family friendly it's a different tone than the first movie the first movie was rated r and this is i believe P probably pg-13 um, so yeah, it's completely different tone than the first movie. Some of the nice callbacks that we saw, like you said, they, they showed a lot of uh, people from the first movie. They showed the, the Dukes are in it. There's a picture of them and apparently their grandson is... Oh, see, I missed that. ...owns the business. You didn't see, you see that in the beginning mm, when Akeem's son is looking for a job and he goes in the interview and oh, the Dukes... Oh, uh, yeah, see, I the, missed that. The Duke's grandson is doing the interview. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and if you don't remember, the Dukes were actually from trading places. They were the stockbroker or these like that. stock tycoons and um Mortimer, we're back. <laughs> they sh they show up in the first coming to America when Eddie gives these two homeless guys money. That was supposed to be the Dukes. Some of the things I didn't like, uh, Leslie Jones. She's a lovely lady. She is, but I just, I just never liked her comedy. I feel like she's always over the top. She always like does the same thing in every role, every time she's on screen. I just feel like she hammed it up way too much for this film. And she didn't really fit in, I think, with the tone of the movie. I, I really wish they had cast somebody else in her role. She was over the top. It was more things I disliked about the movie than I liked. Like I didn't like the fact that the script 
to me, like I said, the script just felt rushed. They could have, they could have went a little deeper into it <laughs> because, like I said, thirty years later, and it was just like they threw people in, like to make you remember, like to give you some type of connection to the first one if you haven't seen it. And then it was just like random spots that really didn't flow. It was seemed kind of like forced. Like I think they could, he could have figured out had he had a son a better way than just him getting high and i remember having sex with leslie jones that was like nah. yeah it was it was because yeah that didn't make sense too either because in the, in the original one he was very particular about the chicks that he uh dealt with so the fact right. that even before he got high in a movie the fact that he was sitting talking to leslie jones was still just like right. i'm not saying she's ugly but it was just like in the movie compared to the ones that he had looked at yeah was like no. Like he wouldn't have even like yeah. wanted her to come back to the apartment. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that didn't make sense. Because he didn't, he didn't want to talk to Peaches, uh, <laughs> of the, the, uh, the twins. He didn't want to talk to the Joan of Arc chick. He didn't want to talk to uh, even the Arsenio uh, chick that he played. Yeah. Um, but then he ended up with Leslie Jones. Like yeah, so that that, <laughs> yeah, it didn't it didn't make sense. I get it. Like they needed a uh, an explanation, but yeah, I think there could have been a better explanation of how how this all happened. I I do wish that they like maybe focus more on his relationship with the son, getting to know the son instead of having like all this extra plot lines, all this yeah. extra stuff added to it. Um, or even if they just took out the whole part of the son and they just focused on his daughter wanting to be queen and her like proving her herself to him and stuff like that. that I think that would have been better too. That, that definitely would have been much, much better. Like it was just a lot that they, they could have explained more because it's like, again, 30 years later, and I know there's only so much they could fit into a, a movie, but the movie wasn't even two hours. It was an hour and 43 minutes, I think. Oh, so, well, yeah, that's kind of short that's, for uh, I think that's including, well, no, maybe not including credits. I don't know. But either way, like I said, they could they could have done a lot more to it. You know, just explain it a little bit more. I like the reference to the um, Akeem's mom. I know she died, but they could have, you know, said what happened. Right, to, yeah. To, they only, like, made one mention to her, and that was, like, towards the end of the movie. Um, yeah, I definitely thought they were going to, like, yeah, just pay, I guess, more of a tribute to her. And yeah. I was just like, oh, so we're not we're not going to talk about the mom? Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan actually oh, approached yeah, Eddie yeah, about a, um, a sequel where Michael B. Jordan played his actual son, not his illegitimate son, and he wants to go to America and find a bride. But Eddie felt he wanted the story to focus more on him and Arsenio than his son. And this is what we got. Um, like I said, overall, it was, this is a feel-good movie. So I gave it a 5.9, uh, 5.7 somewhere out of 10. So not the worst, but not the best either. Um, yeah, the first, like the first movie really takes its time. It really tries to tell a story about Akeem and, you know, how he's feeling. And you even get to see like the friendship between him and Simi. And yeah, and this one is just like scene after scene. And I was like, we did something funny here. So let's do another funny scene. And yeah, they don't really like, like, like you said, build upon the story. And I think they had, uh, I think they had too many dance routines in there. I, that, that kind of, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for <laughs> dancing and everything. It was cool, but I think they had like too <laughs> many in there. I did understand. I'm like, why are there so many dance numbers? Yeah, what? Gladys Knight, you had Salt and Pepper, you had Part of the Vogue. Like, yeah. who, if somebody else was in there, I'm just like, why are there so many dance numbers in this movie? They should have just made it a musical. Like, but uh, shout out to Tiana Taylor. <laughs> hey, look, she, I mean, she, yeah, she killed it. I mean, you already know she can dance, she has a great body, so yeah. She um, she did her thing. Yeah. She actually and and I know she's acted before, but I actually didn't think she would do the accent well, and she did. Like she was actually really good with the accent. Yeah, it was a, it was a dope movie. I uh, I watch it when you know there's nothing else on. <laughs> but it was good though. It was, it, was, it was it was decent enough. It was decent enough from a family perspective. Yeah, I. I, I think I liked it more than he, a little bit more than he did. Um, if he took out Leslie Jones, I think the movie would have been a lot better than what it was. Um, it's just, yeah, it's something you could just put on and popcorn flick. You don't want to really think too much about what you're watching. It's Another thing is uh, stop telling people that they can't like the movie. Just because, <laughs> it's, it's, just because it's a black me movie doesn't mean we got to give it a, a, a letter A grade. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was decent. <laughs> it was decent. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a masterpiece. But it Eddie Murphy put a lot of sauce on it because he said it was better, funnier than the first one. So, 
No. It wasn't funnier than the first one, no, but no. like I said, it was it had some fun some funny moments. Like it was to me it was a cross between in terms of comedy style, a cross between Dr. Doolittle and the clumps. Somewhere in between there. Yeah, yeah, I guess definitely Sprinkled in Wakanda. <laughs> So. Yeah, they definitely took inspiration from Black Panther and Wakanda with some of this, some of the the garments, some mm -hmm. of the costumes. Like, like, yeah, they definitely took some inspiration oh. from that. Shout out to Wesley Snipes too, because uh, people forget how good of an actor he he is. Yeah, yeah, he was actually he was really funny. I I, I enjoyed his character <clears throat> in this. I thought he was pretty cool. And Michael Blackson, I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I wondering if he was going to be in this because you know he's from Africa, so I was wondering if he was actually going to be in there. And Rick Ross too. Random Rick Ross cameo, yeah. More more other story, kids. If they use your house, break your way into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I don't think there's any like quotable lines from this movie. Like, there's nothing no. I remember. The first one definitely like you you could no. quote lines up and down, there but no quotable lines from no it's not like the first one was a classic and i don't think any of us went into seeing this thinking you know with high expectations thinking yeah. it was going to be better than the first one so there's yeah there's no quotable lines from this one i, I really can't remember anything and i'm glad tyler perry didn't ask for a cameo i think i think that just would have been a little too much because they use the studio right yeah. <laughs> seeing Medea and the uh meet the browns and yeah uh, yeah. But yeah, 5.7 out of 10. Yeah. Well, guys, that was our review of coming to America. And hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I release new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> That's it. Um.